Questions? Donna. So is it biblical to set boundaries with lending money? What do you mean? Because in the beginning you were talking about if somebody asks to borrow, you're supposed to say yes and give it to them. Mm -hmm. um, so what if they ask you often or they're not paying it back as quickly as they said they would or um, they're asking for a lot, mm -hmm. you know, like, is it acceptable to set a boundary of number of times you lend or how much you lend? So let's go ahead and let's look at those, th at those three. So they're not paying it back. Uh, not paying it back so as, as, not paying it back as quickly as, 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 as you they want. Need. They're coming very frequently to you to ask for money, but they're asking for a sum that is very great. All right. Uh, in all three of these, wisdom, right? And I'll explain sort of what I mean by that. So let's take that last one first. Someone is coming and asking for asking for a huge sum of money. Um, first of all, again, the principle of uh, of giving to the needs of the saints is uh, give what you give what you can. And so if you can't, don't. <laughs> so that's that's the wisdom there. Um, number two or three, really. So if they're coming to you very frequently, or if a person is coming to you and they're paying it back not not quickly enough, so they're not keeping up with their payments, we'll say, right? There's a call to repentance there, right? Like especially if someone's not paying you back quickly enough, or they're I shouldn't say that, not paying it back quickly enough. I should say they're not keeping up with their payments. That's the moral principle here. And so there is there is the right within brothers and sisters to hold people uh, to, to, to holiness, like to say, hey, look, because you, you, you don't want to just enable this person to continue to sin against God and against you. You want to call them to you want to call them to repentance. You know, you do so lovingly, you do so respectfully. There's the principle we see in Leviticus where if you lend somebody uh, something and they give you they give you their code as collateral. Like give it back to them when the night comes because you're you're still caring for them. So you want to always have that person's health in mind as well. Um, but you absolutely should set a boundary there. Like, hey, you're you're not you're not keeping up with your payments. Uh, I I need you to do so. That's the arrangement we entered into. I don't want you to be a liar and a thief at the end of this. Um, in whatever language works in that relationship. Like that's just the principle I'm laying out there. And I've seen this happen. Like I I, I know of of of. Uh, well-meaning brothers and sisters in Christ who have taken folks in and they agreed on this amount of payment every month. Uh, and then they maybe kept up with it for a month or two. And then it, it just never started coming in for two, three, four, five, six months. And it was sort of, oh, well, we don't want to you know, confront. It's like, first of all, they're, they're sinning against you and against God. Second of all, you're not actually helping them develop skills to not let this happen again. Like, it's, it is loving they, they, you need to have enough love for the person to call them to repentance in that way. Um, and as far as people coming back and over and over and over and over again, yeah, I mean, there's another problem there, most likely. Like, okay, in what ways are you living outside of your means that you keep needing support? How can, is there a way that, you know, I can, we can support you? Do you need to come and live with us for a reduced rent for a period of time? Can we find some other arrangement for your mm -hmm. living situation? Like, tackle the, other. The, if someone keeps coming to you for loans and for money, it's revealing an underlying problem. And is this help them tackle the underlying problem? Just within the body of believers, or or does I think that principle that, that principle applies to both places. That mm -hmm. principle applies to both places. Yeah. Um, if you're in a situation where you are being called to lend, um, or asked to lend, uh, it doesn't matter if it's from a believer or not. Those principles apply universally. Um, so, like, like where I said, you want to hold them to repentance or call them to repentance. I think that's totally fair to do with somebody. Like, and again, it might be an opportunity if somebody's not a Christian and they're they're not keeping up with a payment to you that you've lent them money. Honestly, it's an opportunity to they they may never have understood that they're a sinner before, right? <laughs> like, no, you're, you you lied to me and you're thieving from me. You know, maybe not in exactly those words, but the principle is there. Like, show them that they are being a liar and a thief, and that that might it might set them on the on, on the road to, to, to salvation. And it's not your responsibility to make sure they're on that road, but it, it, it is a it is a means that God has provided to um uh, to reveal sin in somebody else. So anywho, does that make sense? Does that help with, yeah. with the principle? And, it, of and it, is it okay to say no if that person like refuses to get a job? 
like that type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and again, it's, it comes back to like, okay, so what are you doing to try to get out of this problem? Yeah. Let's make sure you've got a let's make sure you've got a plan. Um, because you know, you don't want to keep coming coming and asking me for money. I don't want to keep having to give you money. Let's figure out what the problem is and try to work on it there. So yeah, those conditions completely loving. And I I, I again with wisdom and discernment. Um and there might be a matter of you make sure the plan is in place, like make, make sure that you're applying to jobs. And as when you realize and when they show you, I am applying to jobs, I'm, I am really trying, and you can see that there, there is truth to that, then yeah, lend money in that circumstance. It, it meets the immediate need as you try to address the long-term need. Thank you. Other questions? Anthony. No, go ahead. As far as debt, student debt, for example. Sure. Caesar is talking about debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. How would that relate to like scripture and should a Christian accept debt forgiveness? Is essentially the question. Is that yes. right? Because I think principally it is wrong. I, I would say it is a it is a moral misstep that the government would uh would give debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that is a moral misstep. And again, when the Caesar what the Caesars, they're going to do what they're going to do. We have hope in Christ, not in the government. Um, I think does I think that, it's a mistake. Does that kind of void out the whole fact of paying your debt back and being a slave to your debtor? Where Caesar makes his, we're supposed to... It certainly robs people from understanding their own sin. And like, the, the, the government is not, not doing anybody a service by by forgiving student loans. I really believe that. Uh, from a moral standpoint, from uh, from that person developing into a fully functioning and, and productive member of society, I don't believe the government is doing any services both to society, to that person, or to itself in, in debt forgiveness. I think it's a problem. Um, and I think it goes against the, 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 the ethical standards and the wisdom standards of scripture. I do believe that. Now, the question comes down to, and again, I mean, that's we're allowed to disagree with the government, but the government's going to do what it's going to do. Um, and so when it happens, it's going to happen. People are going to be forgiven their debt. And so, okay, we accept that has occurred. The question then becomes, okay, should a Christian accept that debt forgiveness? Because it comes down to what is what is the personal responsibility of such a thing? I'll be completely honest with you. I've thought about the principle a lot. I'm not sure <laughs> what, the, what the proper play is there, what the proper action is there for a Christian. A, a, I, I am inclined to say a Christian should avoid uh, uh, accepting the debt forgiveness on moral grounds because there is an element of, 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 of thievery there to some extent. So that's, that's where I'm inclined to say, but I don't want to stamp that with Pastor Will says this, but that's, that's my inclination. Uh, it's, any other questions? About any, da, 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 da. Does that answer your question? Are you looking for, okay, Dave. Is it right for the government to forgive a debt and transfer that Debt to another person. Yeah. Well, exactly. That's that's the thievery that element there. The, that's the that's the tyranny element there, right? right. It's the same thing with declaring bankruptcy. <clears throat> the person is forgiven, but the rest of us pay for it. Mm -hmm. And again, bankruptcy, like people, if you're mm -hmm. in, if you're in a position where you need to declare bankruptcy, declare bankruptcy. But the, if you're declaring bankruptcy, it is revealing that you made lots of mistakes along the way, most likely. Uh, Alan. Um, you might have made mistakes along the way, but all, there's also conditions that happen. Mm -hmm. You invest in a business, you sure. have a reset. Like 2008, and, yeah. And, you, and you get, your business gets wiped out. Um, I think it's it's a good Christian principle to forgive the debt in that uh, that it was not intentioned to go that way. And it gives you a chance to start again and maybe repay it back in the future. Mm -hmm. right? Well, and that, that's exactly it. Like a, there's a a Christian, is it's completely within their their rights, and it's even very it can be very moral. There's a wisdom element to forgiving a debt that somebody owes you. Like that's a good thing to do if you if you can do it and you think you should do it in any given situation. But that is different, obviously. And I know you're not saying this, but I just want to draw a distinction for everyone else. As Dave said. There's a difference between me forgiving Alan a debt that he owes me and the government forgiving debt. The government can't forgive debt. The government just shifts debt. 
right? Right. So there's a, there's a distinct difference. Okay. It would be like me saying, all right, Alan, you no longer owe me anything. Donna's going to pay it for you. So kind of continuing off of what Greg was saying there. So say you have a debt with someone. You can't pay it off. That person goes, don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about this. Does that mean you know, on the whole, like, you shouldn't owe anything to anyone? Does that mean that, that, so you don't have to go pay it off, but, like, does that mean in that you are still, like, indebted to them? Because you, you did it go and take money from them, and now they're saying you don't want to have to pay it back. Are you still indebted at that point? Sure. So yeah. it's a de at that point, it's a debt of thankfulness, mm -hmm. right? That, that's sort of how I, that's how we look at the gospel. We owed a debt to God that we could not pay, and he forgave it. Now let us give our lives as a living sacrifice to him. Mm -hmm. So it's a debt of thankfulness. Uh, you owe him, you owe that person thanks. Mm -hmm. You don't owe them the money anymore, but you owe that person thanks. So okay. when a person forgives you debt, what debt reveals is that you sinned against them. Mm -hmm. But in graciousness, they have forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dave? But you are still indebted to them. Because yes, but it's a different it, debt. What? It's a different debt, though. Yeah, it's not but, a financial debt. If, if you borrow something, if Johnny borrows $1,000 from Alan and Alan forgives him, mm -hmm. next time Johnny goes to Alan and looks for money, Alan remembers that $1,000. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you are still indebted to him. Now, if you pay it back, He's going to be a, a, a Alan would be more likely to loan five thousand dollars. I wouldn't say, in a yeah. sense, he's still indebted to him. I would just say th there's information Alan now has that maybe Johnny's not equipped to pay back debt. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's worse yeah. wisdom at that. Point. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. wisdom at that point. Yeah. Another way you can get around it is if they forgive you. And later on, you become prosperous. You can pay it forward to somebody else. Yeah, so, absolutely. And that's that's paying that debt of thankfulness, right? Yeah. That's what Jesus calls us to do. I can't repay Jesus everything, and so the, the charge He has given me is that that which I receive from Him, which is love, I share, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned a verse that said something to the effect of "Don't charge anything," right? Yes. Um, I'm wondering how that plays out with if. I mean, if you're going to give someone something, you're just giving it to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, if you're going to loan it for 30 years, you're also losing the interest that you would have gained on it. So is that literally, you are not allowed to charge interest, period, end of sentence, or it is, is that mm -hmm. a do not profit off of someone else's difficult circumstance? Um, I didn't catch the reference, so I didn't write Yeah, it's, uh, let me find it again. It's Exodus. It's Exodus. <laughs> Exodus 22, verses 25 through 27. If you lend money to my people, to the poor among you, you are not to act as a creditor to them. You shall not charge them interest. If you ever take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you are to return it to him before the sun sets, for that is his only covering. It is his cloak for his body. Uh, what else shall he sleep in? And it shall come about that when he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am gracious. Um, so that's that's the reference for it um, in Exodus. Now, two things here. The first one is uh, that was legally binding to the Israelites. Um, it is principially binding to us, I would say. And I think you're, you're, you're correct. The principle here is do not seek to profit off of somebody else's need. Um, and uh, I would encourage Christians. I can't really think of a situation where like a person-to-person -person loan should require uh, uh, um, interest. Um, I guess I'm saying, like, let's say my brother wanted to buy a house, mm -hmm. and rather than put him in a position of having to loan from a bank, I was like, oh, we can help you with this, so you won't have to, whatever, your credit rating's weird, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, would it be wrong to charge interest so that I am not losing money, or is, should I just say, here, take the cash? I'd... That's a good question. Um, I think another example could be like, hey, I'm trying to start a business or whatever it is. There you go. And so there's this, there's this intention for increasing returns and whatnot. It's not somebody's, it's not this person's need or I don't eat. It's this person's, uh, I'm, I'm looking to do this thing. At that point, that's a business investment. It's not a 
It's oh. not like a personal loan to cover a need. Okay, so an investment would be. I'd say, I, I, okay. I, I, I could be wrong on this. Don't, don't give this the will stamp of approval here. I, but I, I would, I think I would draw a line between yeah. incurring indebtedness and entering into an investment. Okay. If, if then, then what you just quoted from Exodus, it starts out the poor among you. Yes, the poor among you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So if you're someone who's an entrepreneur and you're loaning them money, yeah, yeah, I think you have absolute. That's right. Right. That's right. Business investment versus versus uh, taking advantage of the poor. I agree. Right. right. Um, I I think I saw Doris. Then we'll do Sam and Johnny. I just want to point out. The government still has, I mean, there are laws with the government as to interest and whatever. So the government would still supersede as to what interest you would be charging, et cetera. So sure. You would yeah. still talk, still like maybe not property, but still. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, and, and there's a there's a difference in relationship between an investor and a debt a, a debtor or debtor or a lender rather. Yeah. Uh, Sam. Does this mean that the town of Bedford owes us a debt for nope. all the money no. that they nope. cost us and we're nope. the nope. no. Next question. Uh, we'll do we'll do we'll do uh, I'll do, go in order. Uh, Johnny, Peggy, Donna. So with the uh, like not taking advantage paid. of people in need, I feel so I just wanted to clarify something like okay. back then there was no like inflation like there is now so yeah. if you're, mm -hmm. you're giving somebody money and you bring it back the same amount you're getting the same you're getting the same amount of value back as you gave in modern times you know would it wouldn't be appropriate to like okay this loan has interest on it to offset inflation i'm giving you the same amount of value as you give me back so here's what I would yeah. say to that. First of all, if 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 you and the debt and the debtor mm -hmm. want to enter into an arrangement along those lines, mm -hmm. you're both allowed to do so, mm -hmm. like as long as you're upfront about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would also say, you know, maybe the better principle is, hey, you know, I give you a hundred bucks. Inflation was nine nine percent between the last when when I lent it and when you're paying it back. Let's say you owe me one hundred nine dollars. You can make that arrangement, but if you enter into the arrangement, I'm giving you a hundred. You'll owe me a hundred whenever you can pay it back. You receive the one hundred because that's the standard that you yeah. you set, right? Mm -hmm. um, Peggy, it wasn't. I was just. Oh, you were, you were notifying me that Johnny had an end. No, just, just the mm -hmm. Got you, mm -hmm. uh, Donna. I just wanted to go back to what Cheryl said. So, if you're lending personally, you shouldn't charge interest. And I think what she was trying to say is like I could invest this money and make interest on it, right. but instead I'm giving it to you. And so she's looking to just be made whole, but that's not biblical. Is there's a difference between investing and 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 lending to someone who is yeah. in need. If you're lending to someone who is in need, do not charge interest. As a Christian, you should not do that. If you're investing, uh, be wise. Right. Yeah. Dave, and in doing that, you're teaching the lesson. Right. It is not so much that you'll get the money back. But you're giving the impression that you're Christian. Yes. And at the same point, they're going to be more likely to invest in someone or give to someone somewhere down the line. And I think that's actually a really great jumping off point for wrapping this up. No more questions. Um, exactly right. And so all of this, and again, we've been discussing the, the ins and outs of debt, the ins and outs of debt, the ins and outs of debt. And all of this, all of 12 through 15 of Romans is all about how does your conduct bring glory and point back to God? And so what Dave, what Dave said there is absolutely right. So as we, as we walk in these principles, our focus is not make the most money off of, off of this debt. Our focus is not make sure I, I make sure I follow these rules perfectly right. Our focus is how do I represent God to others? And in so doing, guide them to Christ. And the, what we get out of such an arrangement is an eventually a well done, good and faithful servant. Yes, live for, live for eternity, not for today. And on that note, all done. We'll go to announcements. <laughs>